me now, Michael Brown, former FEMA director. Welcome to the show, Michael. Great to see you. Good to see you, Jerry. All right. I want to start with these comments from uh, the New Jersey Governor Chris Christie. Uh, he is very upset about what's going on. He wants his money. He wants it now. Here's what the governor has to say. Our people are suffering now and they need support now. And they can all go down there and get back to work and figure out the budget cuts later. And what do you make of that? I mean, uh, some Republicans saying we've got to figure out where the money comes from first before we spend it. What do you say? Well, Jerry, I think, I think what Governor Christie did by making those comments is prove my point that we're going to have a very difficult time getting out of this fiscal crisis. Because if a conservative like Governor Christie, who has done, you know, yeoman's work in terms of yeah. getting his state budget back on, on the right path, is now screaming about the feds not taking care of his people. The same thing is going to happen if something, if the big one hits California. Is Governor Christie then going to say, hey, you know, don't do California, do New Jersey first? This is why we have to have a national debate about what's the role of FEMA, what's the role of right. the federal government in responding to these well, disasters, and how much responsibility should the states take on? Well, Michael, I mean, to that very point, though, I mean, the governor is saying my people are hurting and hurting right now. The floods are here. They're right. here now. People are underwater. Uh, they're in danger of either losing electricity or getting electrocuted uh, in their own homes. I mean, respond to that because, I mean, his, his pitch has an emotional appeal, no? It has, a, it has an incredibly strong emotional appeal. And I would simply suggest this. Why not have a national debate about what's the, re, what's the re role or responsibility of taxpayers in Denver, Colorado to help those who are suffering a disaster in the state of New Jersey? What is the role of the taxpayers in New Jersey to pay for a disaster that occurs in Wyoming? We need to have that debate and figure out what the priorities are. Otherwise, I mean, Jerry, you know this. If we don't have that debate and figure it out, we'll just continue to spend money, we'll continue to borrow money, and we'll never fix stuff. Well, to your point, and uh, right now, the Federal Disaster Relief Fund has less than $800 million. That ain't going to go very far at all when you're talking about 7 to $10 billion worth of damages. That was one estimate that was out today. So you bring up the question, you say, let's have a debate. What should happen? What should be done, Michael Brown? Well, number one, I think we have to figure out how much... Uh, overreach, how much has FEMA grown beyond what its original idea, what, what its original mission was? I mean, for example, right now, FEMA will pay for 48 hours of snow removal. If Denver, Colorado has a record snowfall, we will pay, FEMA will pay, the taxpayers of America will pay for Denver to remove snowfall for a two, for a two day period. Huh. Now, seriously? In Denver? I'm not sure that's. Why doesn't the, Denver the pay for that? Role that FEMA should have taken on. Exactly. I mean, that, we know that's the kind of disaster that will occur here. So why shouldn't the taxpayers of Colorado, the taxpayers of Denver, foot that bill, as opposed to the taxpayers in, say, Tampa, St. Pete? Well, you know, we came up with some interesting numbers about, you know, total annual averages by president, right? Number of disasters okay. declared okay. by each and every president. I got to tell you, it goes up with each president. President Obama has declared the most number of disasters out there. And... Why does it just keep growing like this? Is that because we keep lowering our standard, our level, level for what a disaster is? It's, it's because every disaster becomes, uh, we used to joke about CNN disasters. Well, I guess we can now joke about Fox disasters <laughs> because every time there's a disaster, you know, the camera crews will show up. Hey, now, and we got to cover will, it, Michael. <laughs> I, I, I understand that, but the, the, imagine the pressure I that we did a good job. on the politicians. You do do a good job. I'm not saying you don't do a good job. The point is that now suddenly, just like you said to me, what Governor Christie said was very emotional. So when that hits the White House, what's the reaction of any human being? Okay, let's approve that disaster declaration. It may be on the margins, but let's do it. And that's how it continues to grow. Well, I mean, you, you gave us sort of a broad idea of how we could change it, but I didn't hear too many specifics. Are you saying that states should well, uh, essentially pay for more of this stuff and that we should define, yes. define disaster down instead of up? Yes. And, and, I, and I can give you, let me give you one classic example that I tried to cut back on when I was the director of FEMA. And I was, I was excoriated for this. When FEMA was first organized, we gave ice out to hospitals to keep medicines cool and to lactating mothers. That's what ice was used for. Today, we literally give ice out 
in, in the hundreds of millions of dollars so that Bubba can keep his hamburger cool, so that Bubba can keep his beer cool. We give ice out to everybody. I tried to cut that back to a reasonable level. Every member of Congress, Republican and Democrat like, said, no, you can't do that. You can't do that. Well, but, you know, I mean, the flip side of this is look at Vermont. Vermont is inundated with record floodwaters right now. I mean, a real true disaster yes. unfolding there for homeowners, yes, property owners. it is. And, of course, Irene killed a lot of people. I mean, it's not just property damage we're talking about here. It's also loss of life. So it was a devastating storm, and yet it's only defined as a tropical storm. So at the end of the day, a lot of uh, homeowners, property owners out there, may not get everything they are due or need or want in terms of insurance coverage. But uh, that they're that they've signed up for but but Jerry if if someone doesn't get all of the insurance coverage they signed up for then that's an argument between that insurance company and that insured that should not be a debate between the insurance company that homeowner and us as taxpayers that's that's right. a private matter and it should remain a private matter what do we do with the national flood insurance program that's another disaster oh, and that's another thing that grows like topsy every single year and you know the people who don't have any money are bankrolling people with multi-million dollar beachfront estates. You know that's true. Oh, absolutely. And it's a, I think the National Flood Insurance Program is a prime example. Look, the insurance carrier said back in the, in, the, in the late 70s, early 80s, we don't want to cover flood insurance. It's just too difficult. It's too costly. Let's, let's you know, punt that over to the federal government. Well, and now we're seeing what's happening. You don't have a real marketplace for insurance no. coverage. So what happens is now the federal taxpayers throughout the country the number of which continues to decrease, is now footing the bill for people building in places that continue right. to flood. I don't care. I don't care if somebody builds a beachfront house. Power to them. I'd love to have a beachfront right, house. Right, me too. But it should be, my res should be our responsibility, though, Jerry, that if the storm comes and wipes that beach house out, should you and I help them rebuild that? I say no. I don't think so. I say no. I, I agree with you on that, sir. Michael, thanks me so too. much for coming in tonight. Really appreciate